my life, my body, my death. Making final plans before medically ending her life thousands of miles away from home. It's a difficult topic to talk about and it could make some uncomfortable. For one woman, it's a decision not everyone in her circle agrees with, but she says it's the right one for her. Tonight, Crystal Britt has the emotional story of how a Cape Girardeau woman is spending her last moments. It's called the tomato Oh my salad. gosh, that looks you guys want to try some of it? Lunch with friends. The weather is just right. Nice. Try some. Watch and the company, yeah. even better. <laughs> The only thing unusual about this, it's likely the last time these friends will all be together. Why did you settle on the date that you settled on? Gail Hendricks of Cape Girardeau. She's a mom, grandmother, retired career woman, and a planner. My mom has always walked to her own beat. Doing things her own way. You're 79? Yes, I'll be 80. Well, I won't be 80. I won't turn 80. That's because Gail already knows the day she will die. What is that like to know? Yeah. You know, what's going to be on your obituary? You know, we know when it starts, but <laughs> very few know when it's going to end. Right. What is that like? Like the right thing to do. Gail's friends will tell you she's always been an advocate, whether it was protesting phone rate increases. Was going to raise our rates about 70 percent. 70 percent. Or getting involved in groups that support end of life options. I belonged for a while to a group called um, Compassion and Choices. Spending close to 20 years hoping to bring about change and awareness. People are not comfortable talking about death. She says she's known for years that when the time was right, she wanted her own exit plan. I've had a great life. I've had a great life. And that's, I want to have, uh, you know, I want to have some dignity when I'm going to the next phase. About four years ago. A shortness of breath just kept getting worse and worse so that even on flat surfaces, I was, you know, breathing heavy. The diagnosis, lupus and a terminal lung disease. Now on oxygen, around the clock and only able to walk short distances. You're not living like you want to live. No, I don't, no I'm not. And I don't want to get to the point of this is existing, this is not living. Before the diagnosis. She was always busy, always. I've done a lot of things. <laughs> I don't know if we have enough time. <laughs> An avid walker. Anywhere from three to five miles a day, every day. And biker. One day I got it in my mind, I want to ride my bicycle from Cape to the St. Louis and touch the side of the arch. So I did that. She traveled a lot for work, taking advantage of new hiking trails and new adventures. She always either had three jobs or she was always going somewhere, like uh, to concerts or to festivals. That included at one point entertaining crowds as a comedian. <laughs> Still making her friends laugh today. And as she reflects back on her life. Any regrets? Oh my gosh. Are you kidding? We all have them, don't we? Oh my gosh, so many. But has no regrets when it comes to talking freely about the inevitable. We all know that we're going to die. She wants to go out on her own terms. Charlene Festy is Gail's only daughter. She's a very realistic person. She's always hit issues and problems head on. Including the tough ones. It's just, it is going to be hard. But I know that. I know what to sort of expect and I know what the end result is going to be for sure. In a few days, Gail and Charlene will get on an airplane. They'll fly to Switzerland where Gail will end her life. When I started seeing more and more decline, like monthly, I can tell what well, this is not as good as it was last month. Um, I, I knew then that if I wanted to do it while I'm still able to walk in and, you know, make the trip, uh, I need to plan it soon. In the United States, physician assisted death is legal in 10 states and the District of Columbia. All but two have residency requirements, Vermont and Oregon. But all of them have the same rule. You have to have six months or less to live. And I don't want to wait that long. I don't want to get that sick. 
So she chose Switzerland, a country where medically assisted dying has been legal since the 1940s. She started the paperwork this spring and hoped to have made the trip in August. They were booked up. So she chose September 26th. They put a um, IV in your arm and the uh, and the first medicine that goes through puts you to sleep. They have a some kind of button on the um, IV. You have to be able to push that button and that starts those fluids. By the time the second one comes through, you're asleep, you don't even know. What's hitting you in five minutes is done. Are you nervous? I'm not, I'm not nervous. And I was just sitting here while I was describing this thinking, I sound like a clinician describing something. I don't sound like somebody talking about my own death, but it's because I'm so comfortable with my decision. Even so, she knows it's difficult for her family. A huge loss, huge loss for us. Because clearly she means a lot to you all. Yes, a whole lot. It's not going to be the same. Have you had those tough conversations with friends or people that you know that say, we just don't agree with what you're right. doing, we think it's morally wrong? How do you answer yeah. that? Some of them are religious and have, you know, some views. But I think because I've been open about it for so long around people, that they weren't shocked. While some understand, I'll support you. others yeah. don't. If this is the first time you've heard of it, this sounds like something out of the twilight zone. And she's getting her affairs in order. She has already sold her home. Today we've got to go to the bank, we've got to do this, we've got to do that. I mean, I just want to make sure that everything's done that she wants done and, and spend our time together. And she doesn't want our time together to be sad and and you know regrets or anything like that and i've been really trying hard to do that gail knows she will miss out on potentially more quality living but doesn't want to take the chance of ending up in a hospital bed i just am peaceful with my decision and that it's the right thing for me and my body i can't say i agree with her decision i don't and but it's not my choice and I do love her and I support her and there's no way on the planet my mom's going to do this alone. No way. So this mother and daughter will go together on one final journey. But I love her and I support her 100% no matter what and she knows that. My kids know that and I just wish more people were like that. It's taught you a lot it sounds like. It's taught me a lot, a whole lot. And it can teach us all something too. It can. Perhaps by inspiring compassion, and like with this family, unconditional love. In Cape Girardeau, Crystal Britt, Heartland News. Gail hopes that even if you don't support her, her choices, that you talk, take the time to talk about your final wishes with your loved ones, making it easier on everyone when the time comes.